great to be here on Christmas Day. And are you comfortable with your accommodations? Yes. So May, right? The exams in May. And does anyone want to become a dentist? Thank you. Koi dentist ni banna chata hai. It's good to think about becoming a dentist because India has a lot of growth that is taking place with people taking better care of their teeth. What about veterinarian? Anyone love anim animals? Kisi ko animals, dogs mein pyaar nahi hai. So you might want to think about becoming a veterinarian too because that's also growing a lot. Because now people have pets which they treat like children. So they need very good medical care for them. And what about a psychologist, psychiatrist? Is may be interest nahi hai. What about a general practitioner, doctor? You don't want to become doctors. You can raise your hand. Cancer specialist. Anyone wants to become cancer specialist? No? All right. Why don't we talk about what you have in mind? So, first question. Hello, sir. Good morning. My name is Sayan Mandal from JNB Murshidabad, West Bengal. My question to you is that you have came across many people around you. Some are above you and some are below in, in your field. So what do you think, what is the difference between you and them? Thank okay, you, sir. that's a great question. Have a seat. Are you missing Bengali food? Are you missing the fish? Are they giving you fish over here? No fish, no pomfret, no. Maybe next year we can start. So, yeah, so Obviously, you know, different people are like different fingers in your hand. Some are tall, some are short, some are ahead of you, some are behind you, different situations like that. I think the, the important thing is that if, if you are a continuous learning machine, which is that you are reading a lot and trying to learn new and different things, right now you are very focused on NEAT and you need to focus on that. And after that, you need to focus on your medical studies and so on. But once you are in your mid-20s or late-20s or early-30s and beyond, you should be trying to continue to increase knowledge and understanding of different things around you. And most people don't do that. And so if you're a continuous learning machine, what you're going to find is after 10, 20, 30 years, you look to your right and you look to your left and people who were smarter than you are left way behind. So it doesn't matter how smart you are. It really matters how you are using what you have been given and how you are trying to apply that knowledge. And so if you can, if you can do that, then you'll, you'll find that uh, over time that gap expands a lot. That's a good thing to try and do. So, next question. Hello sir, good morning. My name is Sunil Kumar from JNV Udhampur, Jammu and Kashmir. Sir, we know that there is a great risk in getting profit or loss in share marketing. So my question to you is, how to develop techniques of risk taking? Can you repeat the question again? Sir. How can we develop risk taking ability, sir? Some we can I can say that how to manage decision making. Sometimes we can't do it, sir. Okay. So that's a great question. One of the one of the misunderstandings that people have is they think that business people or investors take risk. They think people take risk. We don't take risk. We do everything we can to minimize risk. I'll give you an example of, of how risk, risk is minimized or eliminated, right? So I was 25 years old and I was working at a company. I had a job 
and I had an idea to start a business, right? And, but I did not have any money. And I really didn't want to lose any money because I didn't have any money. So how do you, how do you start a business without taking risk? And what I discovered is that most people who start businesses don't take risk. So basically what I did was, so at the time, I think it was, it was 1991 when I wanted to start this company, I was 26 years old. And I was single, so I didn't have a family or anything. And I knew that if I do anything then, it's probably a better time in life to do that than later when I have kids and a wife and all of that. Made things a little bit easier. So, but I didn't have any money, right? Well, I had an idea for a business, but I didn't have any money. And uh, what, what I did was that in my retirement account, so in 1991, I had no money, but in my retirement account, I had $30,000, which is not much. I mean, it's, a, it's about 24 lakhs or so. And, and I was very willing to lose the $30,000 because it's in the retirement account. I'm 26 years old. Even if it goes to zero, I can take another job and I can again start saving. So it would not matter. So I was willing to lose this amount, no problem. I also applied for, at that time, a lot of credit cards. I applied for different credit cards because I could borrow from those credit cards. And eventually I had another, another $70,000 that was available to me from different credit cards, right? And at, at that time, I had researched U.S. bankruptcy law. And the laws at that time were that such that, that let's say, for example, I put this $100,000 in my business. And let's say the business did not succeed. And the $100,000 went away. So what would happen to this $70,000 is I could just inform the court that I don't have any assets. I cannot pay this money. And what the court will do is they will wipe this out. They'll say, okay, we can see that you don't have the money. We will write it off. And a credit card company would have lost the money, not me. This money I would have lost, right? That's my money, I would have lost that. So the way I thought about it, I said, okay, 100,000 goes into the business, 70,000 if it goes away, it's not gonna affect me. And I also knew that if the business failed, I was an engineer, I can find another job. So I said, okay, so if, if this business I'm trying to do doesn't work and all the money goes away, I will look for a job and I'll get another job and I'll be back to where I was. So the only difference would be from where I was to where I would be is this 30,000 would be missing, right? That's the only difference. I would still have a job, etc. So what I did was in 1991, I started doing two things at the same time. I used to work on my business early morning before I went to work. Then I would be at my employer for the whole day. And then evening, again, I would work on my business. And on weekends, I would work on my business. So I was spending probably 40, 50 hours a week working on my company. And anytime I had like a client meeting or to meet people, I would take half day vacation. You could take vacation in half day increments. So I would just take half day vacation, go meet those people and all of that. And so the expense of the company was very low because I still have my job. I still have income coming, all the rent, everything is paid. There's no issue. After, after nine months of doing this, I had the first three clients. So the company now had income coming and revenue coming and I was very busy because there was a lot of activity going on. And the company was making enough money that I would make more than what my salary was. 
if I were to leave my job. So I went to my boss and said, my resignation, you know, that I'm resigning. So he said, where, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? I said, I'm, I started a company and I'm going to work with my own company and all that. So my boss and his boss told me that, listen, when your company fails, not if your company fails, but when your company fails, come back. We will give you more salary, big raise, promotion, and you can have your, the same thing back. So I, started, I thought it was even better than I thought because I said, okay, if it fails, I don't have to look for a job. I can come back to where I was. I'm, I'm going to make more money and all of that. Now, the, the bet was asymmetric in the sense that the maximum loss was the 30,000. The maximum gain was several million dollars, almost infinity, right? So it's a very asymmetric bet. And if it didn't work, you go back and you've just lost a small amount. So I did not see any risk in what I was doing. It's not like I was gambling with anything, right? And so what ended up happening is this company that I started at 26 was the third company I had started. The first company I started when I was about 22, I had spent about 600 or $700 on that company and nothing happened. I was still in my job, I was trying to do some things, it didn't happen. Then a couple of years later that I started another company with two other people we spent, I must have spent maybe $2,000 on that. And it didn't work. Nothing happened. So we just packed that up. So both these previous attempts did not cost much. And then this third attempt was going to be bigger than the other two. But still, it was a well-controlled experiment. The third attempt worked. So that company grew and scaled quite a bit. And I never went back to my job. And so the journey I had is a very common journey for people who start businesses. We don't, we don't take risk. We do everything we can to minimize risk. And so when you are in third year in medical school, medical college, <coughs> you can send me an email. My email address is mpabrai at dakshana.org. You send me an email. You say you had come to JNV Pune on Christmas Day on 2022. And you said that if I want to start a business or learn about how to do this without taking risk, I will send you a list of some books to read, which will explain how to do this. I don't want to give those book names today. Right now, you need to focus on NEAT. But after three, four years, you can contact me, and we will give you the path. OK? Next question. Good morning, sir. My name is Anki Solanki from JNV Badwani, Madhya Pradesh. Sir, my question to you is that how to change our dreams into reality. Okay. Thank you. That's really good. I was uh, reading some quote of some guy who I think started uh, Jindal Steel. And he was saying that, Agar sapne dekhoge nahi, to pure kaise hoenge? If we don't dream, how can the dreams come true? So, Everything has to start with a dream. What did Martin Luther King say? I have a dream. Have you heard his speech? Raise your hand if you have heard Martin Luther King's speech. CBSE curriculum mein nahi hai. Wo kehte hai na ghalib, ye na thi hamari kismat. Ye na thi hamari kismat. के एमएलके का ड्रीम का स्पीच सुने 
अगर सुन लेते तो कुछ और ही जिंदगी होती एनी वे वॉट यू कैन डू इज लेटर वेन यू गो टू मेडिकल स्कूल और मेडिकल कॉलेज यू कैन गो टू गॉड गूगल गॉड गूगल इज द मोस्ट पावरफुल गॉड सो यू गो टू गॉड गूगल एंड से आई हैव अ ड्रीम मार्टन लूथर किंग इवन इफ यू जस्ट एंटर आई हैव अ ड्रीम इट विल ब्रिंग अप अ वीडियो ऑफ दैट स्पीच and you can listen to that speech and you can have a, probably the best speech ever written or ever given but yeah so i think the the conversion of dreams to reality has to start with a dream so we have to visualize something like when i was starting my company i had a dream to be independent to be my own boss to be able to create something and what you do is you start with a dream then you come up with an action plan and the key thing with the action plan is that we don't take any risk maine to abhi aapko already bata diya hai ke wo punjabi mein kehte hain na hing lage na phatkari rang chokha so for the non punjabis in the ground because we never i am from punjab we never have any scholars from punjab because they are not interested in working hard so such is life but basically it means that without putting a lot of things in place we can build something big and so the the dream conversion to reality is you think of a dream you think about the pieces to make it real you email me in 3 years to get the name of the book of how to convert dreams to reality i'll send you the name of the book anything that you want to do somebody has already done before somebody has written about it before and they have laid out the path for you all you have to do is read and then everything will be revealed to you so next question good morning sir myself dibyanga verman from jnb dhubri assam sir my question is so what will you do if you lost all your money now all right thank you sir it's a great question so the situation is that when we come to this planet we come naked we don't even come with an underwear i don't know why god couldn't provide an underwear when we come you know cover some private parts but we come naked and then when we are leaving we are also leaving naked so we come naked and we leave naked and as it is at the beginning we have nothing and at the end we have nothing now your question is what happens in the middle if you have nothing so middle mein agar kuch nahi ho to koi problem nahi hai there is no issue so when i was growing up my father was a business person he was running different companies he went bankrupt many times probably 6 7 times i saw that he lost everything so the question you are asking about what would happen if you lose everything i already saw that when i was a child growing up at least 6 or 7 times and my parents were very poor financial planners so when the business was doing well they were living really well but they never saved anything so when the business would go down there is no money to pay rent there is no money to buy groceries we cannot even there is no money at all i i saw a situation where there was no money at all so then my parents will go to their close friends close relatives and 
plead with them to give a little bit of money so at least we can get some food. And those people would give some small amount of money to help because you see the situation is pretty bad. But what I noticed uh, over and over again is that my father would go to zero. Then he would come up with some idea of some new business. But he has no money. But somehow, even with no money, he will start the next business. And he, usually his ideas were good. The problem was that he would try to expand really fast. And when he would expand really fast, the foundation was not strong. So something will happen and that business will go away after two, three years or four years or five years or something. So one time I was like 10 or 11 years old and my father had gone bankrupt and uh, there was no money. So every Sunday, this astrologer used to come to our house. And this astrologer is wearing orange clothes, a lot of tikas on the head. <laughs> and my father would sit with the astrologer and the astrologer would explain to my father what is going to happen in the future. And then my father will give him like 10 or 20 rupees or something and tell the astrologer to come back next week. So I was a very quiet kid. I went quietly to my father because I knew that he was an engineer. He was a very rational person. And I said to him, you have to know that whatever this person is telling you is complete and total nonsense. And the money you are giving him is very valuable to us because we have no money to eat or anything. So my father said to me that I am at the bottom of a well and I need to come out of that well at the very bottom. And I need a rope. He says, I cannot come out of the well until somebody gives me a rope. And he says that when I pay this guy and I ask him, what is the future? He knows that if he tells me the future is very sad and very bad, he will not be invited back next week. So he knows that he has to say, you will start a new business. It will do really well. You will flourish and a lot of money will come to you and your family. And then he gets paid and my father says, come back next week. So my father said that weird guy in the orange robes, orange robes, he is my rope to climb out of the well. And every week that he's coming, I'm rising on that well. And my father used to also say to me, you can put me naked on a rock with nothing and I will create a business. And I saw him do that six, seven times. So when I had to create a business, I already knew how to do it with nothing. And so I just went that way. So now we come to the real question you asked which is that what happens if you lose everything? So my father-in-law passed away. He was a scientist at Baba Atomic Research Center. When he used to visit the US, he used to say the United States is the only country where the poor people are fat. So in the US, the people who have a lot of money are very fit and trim. And the people who are really poor 
are very fat because there is a social safety net. The government will give you some money. If you don't have anything, they'll give you some welfare and this and that. Now, what happens in India is that let's say you see some beggar on the street. We are used to seeing beggars who are very skinny in India. What would happen if we saw a beggar who was really fat? Have you ever seen a fat beggar? In US, you can find a lot of fat beggars. But in India, you cannot find fat beggars. Because what will happen is if the beggar is fat in India, nobody will give the person any money. He will become slim. Then he will start getting money. And he, so he knows he has to stay slim to get the money, otherwise he won't get the money. So the situation is in the US that, so this is all in your mind. So basically Buddha, Buddha has a saying, the key to happiness is the elimination of desire. Now if you look at someone like Buddha sitting under the Bodhi, Bodhi tree, what does he have? He has nothing. Is he happy? He seems to be quite happy. He's sitting under a tree doing nothing, just meditating, he seems to be quite happy. So, <clears throat> if I were to lose everything, I'm sure I'll be sad for some time. But I don't think I'll be sad for very long. I will then think, okay, I can take a job. There are some Dakshana scholars who may give me some money. You know, there are some Dakshana scholars who have become very wealthy now. I can go talk to some of them. They may say, okay, you know, I can give you like $10. Have fun. So there may be some people who may, be giving, give, may give me some money. But I can get a job and I can even think about a business. Like my father, naked on a rock. So I'm not, I'm not really concerned. I think life is a journey. Journey will go up and down. I feel very lucky. I did not realize it at the time, but I feel very lucky that I saw what happened to my parents that many times. Many of you have seen that already also, right? And uh, so, ghabrane ka nahi. We can handle it. No problem. And uh, the important thing is you want to maintain integrity, which is like honesty. You want to be a person who can be trusted. Trust is really important. It takes a lifetime to build trust and it takes five minutes to lose it. So if you will build trust, a lot of people will come to help you. So trust is important. Honesty is important. The money is not important. And if it goes away, we will figure out a way to get, get going and do something. Not a problem. So, great question. Don't worry about it. Next question. Good morning, sir. I am Surjendu Biswas from JNV North 24 Parganas, West Bengal. My question to you is, how can I plan to establish an orphanage come old age home adjoining to a hospital? Okay. That is a really good idea. And I wish you the best. So, kya zabardas chai hai? What do you say? Thank you. I am a storyteller. Do you realize I'm a storyteller? Let me tell you another story. I'll try to answer your question in a story that you may understand. It will also explain to you why you are here. So, I think the year was 93 or 94. And my parents were at the time living in Delhi. And they called me and said that there is a cousin of mine who has done BCom from some useless college in Bombay. And he has no job. Thank you. He has no job. So they said, I was running my company, which I started with this 30,000 and all that. They said to me, can you help Arvind get a job? Because his parents are not doing well, he needs to earn, and it will be helpful. So 
I looked at the situation and I knew that with the way that guy's resume and background looked, nobody will give him any job. He has no skills, he has nothing. So I knew these friends of mine in Delhi, they had a very small software consulting business, like four people. And they were doing a lot of visual basic programming at that time. And they were trying to get contracts and things, but they were struggling, they didn't have any money. So I told my friend, listen, my cousin, I want to send him to work with you guys. You don't need to pay him at all. Just you can make him do any work you want. And basically, he will learn programming, right? And in parallel, I told my cousin to move to Delhi and join NIIT course in software. And I said, I'll pay for the course. And I told him he can move with my parents. So there's no rent or anything. So you just. So my friends who had this company, I knew that they are really smart, that if he works there, he will pick up some good skill. They said uh, he can come and work. We will not pay him because we have no money to pay him. But need, he needs to come with his own desk and his own chair and his own computer. And he can use the computer for eight hours a day and other 16 hours, we can use his desk and his chair and the computer. I said, done, no problem. So I moved him to Delhi. I bought the desk and the chair and the computer. And these people who had this small company, they had no money to buy a computer. They were really happy. Ke chalo, ye hamara Bevku friend Monish ne humko free me computer de diya hai. Uska jo cousin aa raha hai, wo aad ghante kaam kar lega, that's fine. But 16 hours we get to use the computer for free. And from my point of view, he was going to get skills. And he was going to take classes. So what happened after one year is that he finished the course and he had picked up a lot of good visual basic programming because they used to give him jobs like testing, karo, ye karo, wo karo. And later they realized he's picking up some skills. They started giving him more important jobs. And after one year, he said, I'm getting some job offers in Bombay. I want to go back. <coughs> when he went back to Bombay after a year, he had 20 job offers. Everyone wants to hire him. So the same guy who one year ago, nobody wants to hire because now he has some important skills he has picked up. So he took his, we donated the desk and chair to the company, Khushro, and he took the computer with him back to Bombay. And then he got a job in London. And now he's settled in London. He has a couple of kids. He's making a lot of money. He's doing really well. So when I saw this whole thing, I said, Ye zero ko hero banne mein, kya, what did it take to make the zero a hero? It didn't take much, right? It just, there was not much expense because room and board, he was already staying with my parents. That computer, he was still able to use after one year. So it was just one year of time, it wasn't much. So later in 2006, I was on the toilet you know, when I'm in the toilet, I am reading. Time ni waste karne. You should always be reading. And I find that when I'm reading in the toilet, the productivity is very high. Okay? So I remember in 2006, I was in Irvine in California. I'm reading some magazine in the toilet. And there's an article about Super 30 with Anand Kumar in Business Week. I never heard of him till then. And I looked at what their article is saying about this guy, taking 30 kids, sending them to IIT. I said, this is fantastic. This guy is doing a great job. And I was trying to find a way of how I can use my money to improve society. By that time, there was too much money. You know, you were concerned about the problem of what if all the money went away. Actually, the problem became there was too much money. 
it went the other way. Okay. <laughs> so I said, Ye Anand Kumar looks like a useful person. And he is doing a good job. He's taking these 30 kids and he's sending them to IIT. So I got his email address from God Google. God Google gives you everything. So I got his email address. I wrote him an email saying, Anandji, you are doing a great job and we should expand your program. And the reason I was interested in this program is because I was seeing that in one year, he was transforming these kids. And the same one year thing has happened with my cousin. What I wanted to do was, what I did for my cousin, I wanted to do for people who were not my cousin. Same process, but you know, do it on an industrial scale. Woto, you know, homegrown ho gaya. So this was industrial scale. So Anand Kumar said, he sent me a standard email. Thank you very much. Thank you for your nice words. We don't take any outside money. We don't want to expand the program. Warm regards, Anand. So I said, you know, I am a good salesperson. Isko patane ke liye, patna ja ke milte hai. Email se kuch hone wala nahi hai. So I told him, dear Anand ji, I would like to come and visit Super 30 and Ramanujan School of Mathematics in Patna. Can we meet? He said, you are most welcome to come to Patna. I said, good. Now I will meet him in person and I will convince him. So I went to Patna. I met him. Again, I made my case that we should expand the program. And I told him, you'll never hear from me. I give you a check. You do everything your way. No one is going to tell you what to do. So you have full freedom. He said, I don't want to take outside money. I'm not interested. Thank you. I said, salesman be fail ho gaya. Okay, so then I, then I asked him, do you mind if I copy your program and do it on my own? He said, nahi, ye badi achi cheez hai. I will help you. So I said, okay, his model looks good. I already did this once for my cousin. Let's see if we can do it. And what ended up happening is because of what happened with my cousin, you are now at JNB Pune becoming doctors. You know, I didn't know that it will go from A to B to C, but that's what ended up happening. So coming back to your old person home next to the hospital, it's really simple. What you do is you find one old person, okay? Don't think of 500 old people. That is too much. One, what did I start with? One person, okay? So you find one old person. That old person could even be a relative of yours, right? Could be somebody who's your grandfather or grandmother or some distant relative or something. And you set up something for that person so they are taken care of. Get some place for them, some helpers for them, so they are taken care of and they have a comfortable life. Someone cooks for them, cleans them, everything, comfortable life. And you see how that goes. Now you are a young doctor and you are supporting one person. Then your income goes up a little bit more, increase to two people, little bit more, Three people. Then when you have a lot of money, you can open a cold center. And you keep going. And when you do it for one, two, three people, you will refine the model. You will find what works and what doesn't work and how it works and all that. So it's not a good idea to start big on day one. You start small, you figure out what's going on, and then you can. Take it from there. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Nalini Kanchan Savar from Janvi, Noapada, Odisha. My question to you is, sir, I have a public speaking fear. How to overcome it? Okay. Please have a seat. So, when I went to college, I, I did my undergraduate in the United States. And I became a computer engineer. I took many different classes. And... When I look back, this was 
36 or 37 years ago, there's one class that stands out that had a huge impact for me. And most of the other classes I took, I can't even remember what they are or what the point was. And the one class that had a big impact was not a required class. It was an elective class. It was a class on public speaking. And uh, there was a choice. You could either take a class on technical writing or public speaking. I really didn't understand what I want to do. I flipped a coin and I picked public speaking. And it turned out to be the best class I took in school. And it turned out that those skills I learned in that class have been very important skills for my whole life. So learning to be a good public speaker is a very powerful tool to have. And it is not difficult to be a good public speaker. So there is a non-profit organization called Toastmasters. There's a non-profit organization called Toastmasters. This non-profit organization, which is free, you don't have to give them any money or anything, has chapters and locations all over the world. There is a chapter in Pune. There is a chapter in every Ames campus. There is a chapter in every medical college in India. And if there is not a chapter in a medical college, if you contact them, they will help you start a chapter in that college. So it's everywhere. So all you have to do when you are in college, you go to God Google. The most powerful God is God Google. All the other gods are Eragera gods. Forget about the other Eragera gods. Only focus on God Google. You just put Toastmasters, God Google, and God Google will tell you everything, take you to the website and all of that. You join Toastmasters, and they have meetings once a week or every 10 days. Go to the meetings. And they have a process by which, over time, you will become a great public speaker. Even if, when you first go to speak, this is what will happen to you. When you first go to speak, the legs will be shaking like this. But later, there will be no problem. The leg shaking will be gone. <laughs> All right. So basically, you just join Toastmasters. And you can do your medical degree and be in Toastmasters. Everything will take care of. The second thing you can do when you join college is <coughs> all these colleges have a drama society. They put plays. You know, they do plays. All the IITs have it. All the medical colleges have it. All the AIMS have it. Join the drama college. Become an actor, especially if you hate acting. Because what will happen is you will become great in public. And again, your knees will shake. But later, there will be no shaking. So you join Toastmasters. You join the drama society. And the third thing you do, you join the debate club. Okay. So ye tino ko aap join kar lijiye. And then you will become a great public speaker. And life will be great. Next question. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Karthi from JNV Chamrath Nagar, Karnataka. My question to you is, why you started Dakshina and what is the profit did you get from it? All right, that's a good question. Please have a seat. Dakshina was started because I had no choice. So 
if you do well in life and you end up with more money than you can spend. So one of the things about money and spending is that it is good to spend money if the money spent is going to make you happier or make you more comfortable or whatever. But after a certain point, additional spending doesn't do that. You kind of plateau out. So there's no point at that point to just spend on useless things or whatever. It will actually make you unhappier to do that. So when you end up with more money than you need, there are only two things you can do with that money. You can either give it to your gene pool, you know, your kids and grandkids, or you can in some way recycle it back to society. And there are no other choices because we can't take it with us. You know, I was trying to figure out a way that when I die, I can take just one pin with me. But I was told the pin will not be allowed. So even their yum is not even allowing a pin to go. He is so ruthless. So, like my dad used to say, Nange aaye hai, Nange jana hai. And all life is, is figuring out the gap between those two points of nakedness. Okay? So, if you give the money to your kids and grandkids, and it's a lot of money, you will do more harm than good. Their life may not be as good. You know, what is the point of just sitting and doing nothing all day? What is the point? Life will be so useless. It is better to chucky piso and do the neat, and then chucky piso and go to medical school, and so on and so forth. We love to chucky piso. So, Basically, the reason Dakshna was started was I had no choice. I knew giving it to the kids would be stupid. And my kids don't want the money. They specifically told me, humko koi interest nahi hai. And so then we give it back to society. And now, sometimes when people see Dakshna, they come and ask me, angle kya hai? They are trying to figure out how am I benefiting, right? That was what you were asking. So, aisa hai ke angle nahi hai. Ye mazburi mein kiya hai. I have no choice. And so, the only, I, I would say, so what has ended up happening is that when I started Dakshana, I said, okay, I have no choice. I have to do this. It will take work, etc and whatever. But what I found is that it's actually been a lot of fun. You know, I get to interact with you. I got, get to tell you all these fun stories. And you guys go on to do great things. It's all great. So there's no angle. It is what it is. And sometimes it's good to do things where it's not going to benefit you. Those are the things that work out the best. So, next, next question. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. I am Shubho from JNB Kalyan in Adia, West Bengal. My question to you is that how we can start from nothing to have everything in life? Thank you, sir. Okay, that's a great question. I have noticed that all the great questions are from people from Bengal. And what I noticed is that when I was growing up, I had some great Bengali friends. And I used to have some great fish in their homes. It was very good. And these people would sleep really late at night. Like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. They will go to sleep. And between 11 o'clock at night and about 3 o'clock in the morning, they are smoking non-stop. 
one cigarette is lighting the next cigarette, is lighting the next cigarette. And that's how it's going. And then as they are smoking the cigarettes, they are solving all the problems of the world. So the Bengali guys, like three or four Bengali guys are together, all smoking at night. They are college students. And they'll think about some problem India has. And they will discuss that problem. And then they will solve that problem. And then they will go to sleep very satisfied that the problem has been solved. Then they wake up the next day and they find the problem is still there. So like for example, if I get my Bengali friends together and say, and they start talking about why is India a poor country? They will have a vigorous debate about why India is poor. They will also come up with solutions about how India can no longer be poor. And then they'll be feeling really good. And then they go to sleep. But they don't believe in actually doing anything. They are just very happy to just talk. And that is Bengal. Okay, excuse my French. So your question was, how do we start with nothing? and end up with everything is a classic question my Bengali friends would come up with. So the question actually is a bit flawed. So if we go back to Buddha, you know, he said, the key to happiness is the elimination of desire. There was a poet who lived about 120 years ago, Asadullah Khan Ghalib, also known as Mirza Ghalib. And uh, one of his verses, I, I think I can remember this, he said, Hazaron khwaishe aisi ke har khwaish pe dam nikle, bohat nikle hai mere arman, Lekin phir bhi kam nikle. So, the nature of desire is such that the more our desires get satisfied, the more new desires we have. And so we are on a treadmill into endless desires. And the great Buddha solved this problem for us. He said, na rahegi baas Na bajegi basuri. Desire koi maar do. So instead of saying, how do I go from nothing to everything? Maybe we should say, how do I attain nirvana with nothing? How do I get to a nirvana state with nothing? And I know that that's the wrong answer because I'm not in a nirvana state with nothing. But I would say that to answer your question more directly, I think you just put one, one foot in front of the other. So you are studying for NEET. Hopefully you'll go to AIMS. Hopefully you become a great doctor. You already have more than you have today. You may become a very famous doctor or a very wealthy doctor or whatever. And that's also fine. And you'll be on your path to going from nothing to, ev to everything. So that's a pretty, I think it's a pretty easy, straightforward thing to get to. Next question. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Rohit Kumar from Patna, Bihar. Sir, my question is that there is a lot of distraction in the life and due to that distraction, I am not getting success very much. How to overcome this? Okay, it's a great question. Thank you, sir. इसका इलाज बहुत इजी है। I am surprised other people have not given you the answer, but I was sent here today to give you the answer. That was the reason I was sent. So 
if you look at all your classmates, you will notice that there are some people jinko distraction ka problem nahi hai. So you'll notice some people are people you admire a lot. You look at the traits, how they do things, different things. And uh, it seems to be very good. You look at some other people and you find that they are even more distracted than you. So in, in the way humans are, there is a gravitational pull. If, we, if I hang out with people who are better than me, I'll get better. If I hang out with people who are worse than me, I'm going to get worse. So the thing to do is two things. One is identify the individuals who are really high quality individuals that you look up to, who don't have this distraction problem and so on. And you do two things with that. One is you try to become their friend and you try to spend more time with them. Because if you will spend more time with them, you will become more like them. And the second, <coughs> sometimes they may not have an interest in being your friend. But you can still observe them. They cannot stop you from observing them. Abhi jaise hamare hero ek lavya saab the, he was not made the student of Dronacharya. But that did not stop him from learning. And eventually he became even better than the student who was actually being taught. So the thing is that if you observe certain traits in certain people and you start spending more time with them, that's going to help you. And if you observe how they do things, that's also going to help you. So I think we are, humans are very influenced by our peers. You may have some friendships currently where it is fun to be with the person, but they're not better than you. They are a bad influence on you. You have to take the deliberate action of getting rid of them. And you have to take the, also the deliberate action of getting with people who are, who are basically more aligned with you. And that is going to help you on your journey. So it was a pleasure to spend time with all of you. So much fun and excitement. Wish you all the best with NEAT. And uh, we're going to do pictures in two groups, Dipayan. One group. All right. We'll see you shortly. Thank you.